Hi, this is Brian Forrester coming to you from Paracas in Peru. And I want to give you an update as to the recently released DNA results of the Paracas people. Now it's taken us five years uh, since we began this process to actually get the results. It took almost three years to get, or two and a half, to get permission from the Ministry of Culture of Peru, who we worked with very closely, especially with archaeologist Ruben Soto, in order to have the DNA testing approved by the government. A total of 18 skulls was tested, and results came back from 12. The DNA was so badly degraded after 2,000 to 3,000 years that of the 58 samples of 18 skulls, we got results from 12 of the skulls from two different laboratories, one in Canada, the Lakehead University, and another one at UCLA in California. A third lab was also utilized at uh, Santa Cruz, uh, University of California, but they stated that of the, I think, 18 samples they were given, no results were forthcoming. We're, we're not sure if that's true or whether the results were so bizarre that they decided to hide them. So, <clears throat> in what I can basically tell you is that um, all Native American people of 100% uh, Native ancestry are supposed to be and were of the haplogroups A, B, C, and D. So this is one of the Paracas elongated skulls. This is one that we believe is natural in shape. And as I turn it, you will see the complexity of the design. You see all that amazing curvature. And basically there's a depression here where the two hemispheres would be. The eye sockets are very large. And the, there is a lack of a sagittal suture here. So the results that we got, um, <clears throat> four of the elongated skulls were of haplogroup B, which relates to uh, the fact that um, there was Native American ancestry involved. But the other ones were not. And uh, the most common haplogroups that showed up were U2E and also H. H1A and H2. If you look at where the most prevalent um, percentage of U2E and the H1s are, it is in between the Black and Caspian Seas, as in the Caucasus Mountains. And so that's very intriguing. Um, what I can also share with you is what I believe was the migrational pattern, because these people like the, some indigenous people of the Caspian area and Black Sea area um, were and are dark red haired and also very light skin and green eyes. And this seems to correspond as well with the elongated skulls. So I believe what happened was about 3,000 years ago, the uh, ancestors of the Paracas decided to leave the area because they were being invaded by someone. And so they traveled south through Iraq and Iran to the Persian Gulf, and there they wound up sailing eastwards and eventually found their way to the coast of Peru. There are different routes they could have used. They could have gone through Hawaii. They also could have gone through New Zealand. But then they wound up at the largest natural bay on the coast of Peru, which is Paracas, and that's where they decided to live because there was basically no one living there. They could live in peace and that's where they develop their high culture. So this is only an initial um, release of information. There will be more, and there will be a book available probably by the end of February 2018, and um, there will also be a DVD, and these will be available through L.A. Marzulli. L.A. Marzulli at lamarzulli.net. That's it for the moment. I'm going to be doing more of these kind of spontaneous YouTube videos in the future because I can't constantly be traveling. It's just it's starting to drive me nuts, but I do have a lot of footage taken recently in uh, Mexico. We were able to find examples of lost ancient high technology at different sites in Mexico, so stay tuned for those.